Have you ever wondered just how strong your Minecraft character is to be able to carry thousands of logs, stone, or water in your inventory? Well, some people who are smarter than me, or more obsessed, have calculated just how much you can carry and made videos about it. But what I haven't seen anyone talking about is how your gastrointestinal fortitude rivals that of the Titan Cronus. You know, the one who ate all his kids. The idea of thriving off of zombie flesh, or shrugging off temporary poison from a pufferfish, is insanity. So how about for today's Caves Notes, we talk about the game's hunger mechanic, and the types and effectiveness of its various food. Minecraft is a game with nearly unlimited possibility. It's about as open world as you can get. Explore, fight, gather, create. You can do whatever you choose to set your mind to. But the same things that make Minecraft great may also make it overwhelming, especially for newer players. And that's why this video exists. I can't tell you how to play, but I can help you discover what you can do to get you started, and for some more experienced players, maybe help you brush up on the basics. Welcome to Minecraft Caves Notes. Let's go ahead and mine right into today's topic. To really understand how hunger works in Minecraft, it's important to know that there are actually two hidden attributes that are calculated to determine your hunger points and health regeneration. But we only need to talk about one, and we can skip all the math. You don't need the minute details, just the concepts. The invisible value we need to be aware of is called saturation. For a real-life example, try to imagine a time when you ate just enough food to curb your hunger and then see if you can think of a time when you ate a meal and then felt like you were bursting with energy. The easiest way to think of saturation is extra food points beyond what is shown on your HUD. Different foods will provide you with varying levels of saturation, but in general, cooked meat and golden food items will be the best, while fruit and raw foods will be the worst. How does your hunger bar change in the first place, and what happens when it does? The fastest way to get hungry is simply through your own passive health regeneration. Remember that at 90% or greater on your hunger bar, your hit points will regenerate. How much saturation you have will determine how many hit points you regain before dropping down to 85% hunger. So taking damage in any form is the fastest way to lose food level. The next fastest way is through the status effect called hunger, which you can get by eating certain foods or by being attacked by a husk. After that, the following actions will all affect your hunger from most to least. Jumping while sprinting, attacking, taking attack damage, or just sprinting, jumping, swimming, and mining, or basically breaking blocks. Walking, using a boat, and interacting with blocks do not influence your hunger or saturation numbers, and in fact, if you reach 30% or less on your hunger bar, you will physically no longer be able to sprint and will only walk. And if your hunger bar gets to zero, you will begin taking starvation damage, unless you are in peaceful difficulty or creative mode. On easy mode, starving damage will stop when you reach 50% health. On normal mode, you'll get to 5% health, or half a heart, but you won't lose a life from starvation. On hard mode, there's no safety net. If you are starving, you're in mortal danger. Alright, I'm sure you're chomping at the bit by now, so let's move on and talk about food. There are quite a few different types of food in the game. As I mentioned, I'm not here to teach you the math or argue for the maximum efficiency on your food consumption, so instead, I've classified Minecraft's food into several categories based roughly on progression through the game, and their general restoration and saturation bonuses. Let's start with the short category of foods you shouldn't eat at all, unless you're incredibly desperate, or you're trying to unlock the Java advancement for eating everything. Let's start out with poisonous potatoes. Poisonous potatoes can occasionally be gotten when you are harvesting potato crops. Poisonous potatoes will restore two hunger points, but there's also a 60% chance that they afflict you with poison. As far as the letters on the bottom of these signs, these are an estimated tier as far as saturation value for the different types of food, using the S and A through F scale. Poisonous potatoes are in the E tier for low saturation. Pufferfish is... just don't do it. 
It's a single hunger point restored, and it will give you poison, hunger, and nausea, as well as not being saturating at all. Hi guys, you stay over there. Killing spiders or cave spiders may reward you with a spider eye. This, like the pufferfish, can be used as ingredients for brewing. It's just not worth eating at uh, two hunger points of restoration and poison even though it is C tier for saturation, ironically. All zombie variants may drop rotten flesh, and it will give you a little bit more hunger points, but also likely afflict you with hunger. There's an 80% chance, and it's not very saturating. Other uses for this would be feeding it to your dogs. No, that's not a joke. It's actually okay for them. Or trade it away to cleric villagers for some emeralds. Lastly, raw chicken. Although it may seem odd to put this one in the category here, the difference between raw chicken and other raw meats is there's actually a 30% chance that you get afflicted with the hunger status. So, unless you have to, don't bother eating it this way. Wait till you can cook it. Next up, we have some foods that are definitely still not worth it. Um, if you're hungry, just chew some gum. The flavor will give you more restoration. There's no gum in Minecraft, I'm just kidding. Potatoes, unlike their poisonous counterparts, will not poison you, but they only restore a single hunger point and give you almost no saturation. Same with beetroot. Their saturation is a little bit better, but it's still just one hunger point. Use these two items instead to lead and breed pigs. Tropical fish, if you find them through fishing or happen to decide to swim through the water and whack them with your sword, are just not worth eating at all. Dried kelp can actually be eaten, unlike regular kelp, but again, its restorative properties are pretty abysmal. So instead, take nine of these items and craft them together into blocks, and then the block of dried kelp can be used as a furnace fuel. Next up, we have the survivalist category. This is uh, when you just have to eat what's available to you. Starting with raw cod... Um, a little bit better than the tropical fish, it'll restore two hunger points, but again, this is very situational, as in general, you'll want to save this and cook this. Salmon, likewise, has the same properties as raw cod. Now, if you do find some rabbits, you could eat some raw rabbit meat, and they're going to be slightly better than the raw fish. However, rabbits are can be a little bit difficult to catch and their restorative properties are just not that much. Sheep will drop raw mutton when killed. This isn't super useful, but you may have some of it from trying to get wool from sheep before you have a set of shears. Save it for cooking if you can. Pigs, on the other hand, will drop pork chops, raw pork chops to be exact, and as always, raw meat just isn't that great, and since that's all the pigs drop, Instead, you may want to consider looking for some cows. Raw beef is the same as raw pork chop in terms of uh, nourishment offered, but at least the cows will also sometimes drop you some leather, which can be useful. Moving on to the melons. Melon blocks, when broken, will drop several melon slices. These are not very restorative, and they're pretty low tier for saturation, but at least you do get quite a few of them. And later on down the road, the melon slices can be combined with gold to make a potion ingredient. Sweet berries are also not very restorative, and their saturation actually differs a little bit between Java and Bedrock. You get a little bit more saturation on Bedrock from sweet berries than you do on Java. Um, however, the one thing that would maybe make sweet berries better than the uh, other items in this category is that they do grow quickly. So if you need some food in a pinch, um, there's nothing wrong with having a couple of berry bushes. Glowberries, on the other hand, grow underground in lush caverns. And they're useful for light and for uh, growing vines that you can climb on. So you probably want to ignore them as a food source. The first crafted food that we have are cookies. Cookies are crafted in groups of eight using two wheat on either side of a cocoa bean. But as far as their usefulness, they're 
no better than any of the other foods that we've discussed in this category. Carrots, on the other hand, are actually slightly better than other raw vegetables. They restore three hunger points, as well as being in the C tier for saturation. And then finally in this category, we have apples. When chopping down oak trees or dark oak trees, either by breaking the leaves or allowing them to decay, you may get some apples. Apples restore four hunger points, and they're in the D tier for your saturation. They're still not that great. It's better to save these, like with the melons. These can be combined with gold eventually, and we'll get to that near the end of this video. All right, we have reached my nourishing category. This is where you're a little bit established, and the food is actually worthwhile. The big difference here, as you can see with the furnaces, smokers, and campfires in the background, is once you start cooking fish or meat, it, uh, it gets a lot better for you. So cooked cod goes up to five hunger points restored and is in the B tier for saturation. Cooked salmon is actually even a little bit better than that and is among one of the better items in the game for saturation. Cooking the rabbit, sorry guys, knocks it up to the same levels as the cooked cod. Cooking chicken removes the chance for negative status effects and bumps us up to a, a 6 on the hunger restoration and B tier for saturation. Meanwhile, mutton, once it is cooked, actually goes to A tier for saturation. Our next crafted food, similar to the cookies, is just three wheat in a horizontal line, and this gives us bread. Although wheat is one of the slower crops to grow, as you can only harvest one at a time and you don't get multiple, such as other vegetables, um, farmer villagers may also sell bread, and you can find it in several chests. Baked potatoes have the same values as bread do, and simply require you to harvest potatoes and cook them. You might be surprised to learn that uh, honey bottles, which is pure sugar, is actually a decent food in the game. That said, its saturation value is pretty low, but it can restore six hunger points, and although I forgot to put it on the sign, it can remove poison. Just keep in mind that you'll need empty bottles to collect it, and you'll want to have a campfire under a bee's nest in order to take the honey, or else the bees will get angry with you and attack you. If you have access to mushrooms, one option here is mushroom soup. Mushroom soup restores six hunger points and is in the B tier for saturation. Now, when it comes to recipes involving the bowl, any soup or stew, as well as uh, pies, these recipes are what we call shapeless. That means that it does not matter which slots you place the items into, these items can go anywhere in the crafting grid in order to make mushroom soup. Similar to that is beetroot soup. Is it mushroom stew? It might be mushroom stew. Likewise, beetroot soup also gives you six hunger points of restoration and is B tier for saturation. It is six beetroots in a bowl. It's not much better than just eating the beetroots themselves. This isn't necessarily a very efficient food source. Now we've gotten to the point where you are thriving. You have the ability to cook better meat. Maybe you've created uh, some, some farms and bred some animals. Or you've got some villagers to trade with for food. So if you cook up pork chop, it jumps to a plus eight on the hunger restoration, as well as being near the top of the list for saturation. Beef is the same. Once it's cooked, it's plus eight and it's S tier. Pumpkin pie, on the other hand, does not have as high of a saturation value, but it does restore eight hunger points and its crafting recipe is not too difficult if you've actually started farming. Before that, it may be a little bit more difficult to get your hands on some of these items. It's also one of the traits that is commonly offered by farmer villagers, so you may be able to get a number of them very quickly. And then finally we have rabbit stew. Rabbit stew, ironically, is the item in the game that restores the most hunger points at once, However, it's commonly noted that if you were to eat 
its individual items separately, you would actually gain more restoration that way. So it's not very efficient, especially given the fact that items and bowls don't stack. But you can buy this from butcher villagers once they level up. One note for this is in this recipe, again, not only is it shapeless, but the mushroom may be either type of mushroom. And now to the fun stuff. The next three items are golden food items. And this is going to be the best type of food that you can get in the game. Golden carrots only actually require a carrot and eight gold nuggets. So if you've managed to create a decent source of gold and you farm some carrots, this is very reasonable. On top of that, farmer villagers may sell these a single emerald for three of them. So if you've spent some time getting emeralds, you now have the most highly saturating food in the game at your fingertips. Golden apples, on the other hand, require ingots to craft. So these are probably not efficient to make yourself, but you can certainly have a handful of them available to you and ready to go. Although the saturation of a golden apple and an enchanted golden apple are actually A tier and are less than steak and cooked pork chop, the golden apple will also give you some positive status effects. It will give you a short amount of regeneration as well as something called absorption, which is a bit like a magical shield that will absorb a certain amount of damage. And you will see this as extra hit points on your health bar. Now enchanted golden apples actually up this to an insane degree. Not only do you get regeneration, more regeneration, and more absorption, but you also get a period of resistance and fire resistance. But unfortunately enchanted golden apples are the one food of the game that are not renewable at all and must specifically be found in chests in certain structures. That said, it is a tendency of players to hoard these. Just remember, they're here to use. Don't be afraid to eat them if you're in a high-risk situation. Finally, let's talk about a few special foods. These are not better than the golden foods, but have their own interesting quirks. This monster of a recipe is for a cake. Now, as you can see here, uh, cake restoration is not that good per slice. It's a uh, plus two on your hunger bar, and it's F tier for saturation. That said, if you eat the whole thing, then okay, it's a little bit better. You know, if you feel okay about eating an entire cake on your own. But what is interesting about the cake is that unlike other food items, you don't eat it from your hand. Instead, you must set it on the ground, and then it acts like a block. And as long as you are hungry you can eat a slice of it and it will change the hitbox of the block. Unfortunately, you cannot pick this up, not even with silk touch. Once the cake is on the ground, it's on the ground. You either eat it, you destroy it, or you leave it alone. The actual recipe for cakes is three entire milk buckets, three pieces of wheat, two pieces of sugar and an egg, and it does need to be in this configuration to make the cake. Yum yum. Another weird case here we have is Suspicious Stew. As you can see, Suspicious Stew is made with a bowl, one of each type of mushroom, and a flour. Now that flour can be pretty much any of the regular short flours, but depending on what flour you use, gives the Suspicious Stew a status effect, and that status effect is not shown in any of the tooltips. So although this does restore six uh, hunger points and it is B tier for saturation, it also is going to have an additional status effect based on the flower that's included. And this could be good or bad. There are a number of different types here. Finally, we have Chorus Fruit, which uh, doesn't give great saturation and only restores four hunger points. But this is the one food type that is not found in the overworld and is instead found in the game's end dimension. And eating it will cause you to randomly teleport. One final note. Chorus fruit, suspicious stew, honey bottles, 
Golden apples and enchanted golden apples are the only foods in the game that you can eat while you are full. And this is because of the status effects that they give, or in the case of honey bottles, clear. Um, likewise, milk buckets, although they're not here as food, can be drunk while you are full on your hunger bar because they are meant to clear status effects. Well, I think that about covers the important things that you need to know about food in Minecraft. Thank you for joining me today on this culinary journey. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.